If I ask, who are you? How will you answer this question? Would you say that I am a body? Would you say that I am a human? Would you say I think, therefore I am? Or would you say I am me? Would you say I have a body? Or I am a body? Would you say I have a soul? Or I am a soul? What would you say? How would you describe yourself? Would you say that I am an artist? Or I am a brick maker? Or I am the president? I am a brother or sister? I am a mom or dad? I am English? I am British? I am Lithuanian? I am an earthling? What would you say? How would you describe yourself? You see, you can use so many words, but the problem is that none of those words are unique. If I say that my name is Thomas, I am from Lithuania and I am a filmmaker, what does it mean? Does it describe the true me? But there are so many people out in this world who have the same name as mine and who are doing videos as well. If you say I'm a dad or mom or a kid, okay, but there are millions of dads and moms and kids, so who are you? You see, you need to peel all of those layers out from yourself to discover who you truly are and the magnificence of who you truly are is far greater than your mind can ever comprehend. Because of that, who is you is undescribable in any language. So if you ask yourself, who am I? And if you say, I am a body, but then who is thinking? If you cut your hand or leg, you still feel like you. You don't feel that part of me has gone away. You see? So you are not only your body. I am not saying that you aren't your body, but you are not just your body. You have a body, but you are not a body. So then you might say, okay. So it means I am the mind. But is that really true? How can you know? Well, when you are thinking and you are observing, have you ever observed your thought? The one who says, I think, therefore I am. Who is that? The one who thinks about tomorrow and the one who understands that somebody is thinking. These guys are different. So who is the one who understands that you are thinking? That is the spectator. So if you can spectate your own thinking, if you can watch your own thoughts, are you the mind or do you have the mind? The answer is clear. So you are not just your body, and you are not just your mind. You are somebody who is even higher than that. But then if you say, okay, so I am a spectator, I am the watcher. Oh, but wait, who just realized this? So there was a spectator of a spectator. So you are not a spectator, you have a spectator, so then who are you? You see how interesting it goes. So now when you understand that you are not only your body and you are not only your mind and that the one who you are is eternal, then the world will switch upside down. 
You see, the biggest reason why people are fearful in this world is that they think they will die and everything will end. If you think that you are just your body and mind, then you are living in an illusion that you have to go through life according to the plan and don't make mistakes because you think you live only once and you can never get back to relive your lessons. You think that you have to go to school, get married, get a job, have kids, grow old, save for pension, and buy a place in the graveyard before you die. And if you think that you live only once, then you are kind of missing the point of why you are here. Then it's so easy to get into drugs and never-ending chase of dopamine. It's so easy to get addicted to infatuations and fantasies, which always turn into nightmares. But if you think that I am not just my body, and I am not just my mind, and when you observe this by your own experience, then what happens? Life, instead of being a burden, becomes a fulfilling and meaningful journey. And you want to live more and more and you want to be connected to the nature and you want to be connected to other souls and to experience the magnificence of life. You know that you are simply here to learn your lessons and to put as many pieces into your puzzle during this lifetime. I wish you all have a meaningful life.